Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to my channel, Runaway Slave. For those of you who don't know, this is the 2.0. This is where we're going to rock out in the meantime until I figure out what I want to do with the videos. But first, I like to say thanks to all my subs. Anybody who watches the videos, clicks like, comments, shares, anybody who has donated to the channel or purchased the masterpiece, the N word is no secret in the service. I appreciate you all. For more information, just look in the comment section. You'll see the pinned comment and you'll get all the information you need right there. And please do join the email list. Please, if you have already joined the email list, that means I already have your information. But if you have not joined the email list, please scroll down on that comment and click to join the email list. Anyway, let's cook. Okay. Willie J. Howard and the Deadly Love Letter. So people, we often hear the horrible stories about Emmett Till and what happened to him. It's a very popular viral story in American history. Most people have heard of Emmett Till. But what a lot of people don't realize is that these terrible things that happened, this terrible thing that happened to Emmett Till, it was very common, very common. And the youth, the children were not exempt from this, okay? There are thousands of more stories, Emmett Till. Little boys, little girls, young men, young women, adults, whatever. It's just that the Emmett Till story is the one that hit the media big time. And I believe it also has something to do with the fact that Emmett Till's mother lived in Chicago, you know, and she wasn't really stuck down in the deep south, you know, because there were many black men, women and children in the deep south that were lynched, brutalized and just taken out by white Americans. And yet nobody knows their story. Nobody knows about them. So we're going to talk about a young brother by the name of Willie James Howard. So this happened in the year of 1943. As you can see, 1943, not that long ago. Now, Willie James Howard, he lived in Sawan County, Florida. This is the deep South Florida. As we know, horrible state, always been, you know, and, uh, Willie James Howard, he was 15 years of age. He was a smart young man, very happy, very likable, very talented. He's a high school sophomore. He was known by his peers as a young man who could sing well. He was clean, neat. He dressed nice. Uh, he was always polite and respectable. And a lot of the young girls in the community had a crush on Willie James Howard. Willie James Howard lived with his mother and father. Both of his parents were employed. Now, being that both of his parents were employed, you know, they could afford nice garments and shoes for Willie James Howard. He always dressed nice. Uh, now, the story goes, Willie James Howard, he had a seasonal job over the Christmas holiday in the year 1943. Again, he's 15 years of age. Now, he's working as a delivery boy at a store called the Van Priest Five and Dime Store. Now, at this time, it was very unusual for a black boy to work inside this store and make deliveries. You know, this is not the type of store that would typically hire a black per person. So Willie James Howard was allowed to work at this store because, again, he didn't look like the typical poor black person from his neighborhood or in the deep south at that time. Again, he dressed well and he was always charming. Now, at one point while Willie James Howard was working at the store, he became infatuated with a 17-year-old white girl who worked there by the name of Cynthia Goff. Now, Willie James Howard, again, he was nice, and it's the holiday season. So since he's nice and it's the holiday season, he decided to send all the female employees at this Van Priest store a Christmas card. So he sent all the white chicks a Christmas card, okay, that worked at the store. Now, after Willie James Howard sent this card to these girls, he heard that this white girl who he had a crush on named Cynthia Goff was upset that she received the card from him. Now, being that Willie James Howard heard that Cynthia Goff was upset, he decided to send Cynthia Goff an additional personal letter to clear it up. OK, and the letter that Willie James Howard sent Cynthia Goff, Cynthia Goff, goes as follows. This is what he wrote. This is what we have in history, word for word, people. This is what they say Willie James Howard 
wrote on the original letter because they still had this original letter. Dear friend, just a line to let you hear from me. I am well and I hope you are the same. This is what I said on that Christmas card from Willie James Howard with love. I hope you will understand what I mean. This is what I said. Now, please don't get angry with me because you can never tell what may get in somebody. I did not put the letter. I did not put it in the letter myself. God did it. I can't help what God does, can I? I know you don't think much of our kind of people, but we don't hate you and we want to be your friends. But you won't let us. Please don't let anybody see this. I hope I haven't made you mad. And if I did, tell me about it and I will forget about it. I wish this was a northern state. I guess you'd call me fresh. Write back and tell me what you think of me. Go to bed. Sincerely yours with love. To Cynthia Goff. I love your name. I love your voice. For sure, I think it says, you are my choice. There you go, y'all. So this is the letter that young Willie James Howard wrote to the white girl, Cynthia Goff. Um, as you can see from this letter, Willie James Howard is begging this white girl to like him, okay? And if you notice, he even said, I know you don't think much of our kind of people, but we don't hate you. We want to be your friend. You know, this girl, she must have been nasty to black people, and Willie James Howard must have observed that. He probably knew that she didn't care for his people. But Willie James Howard, he was going to keep trying. He also said, I wish this was a northern state. And people, you know what that means. In a northern state, you can get away with more mingling with white people. It was more integration in the northern states. They weren't as segregated as the South. Of course, the northern states were very racist as well, but they were a little more tolerant. Okay. So Willie James at 15, he knew what he wanted in life. He understood everything he was writing in his letter. He understood that this girl did not like his people. Now, he also, what was also important is, in that letter, he also went to say that this was an act of God. He said, I didn't put that in there. God did that. So he knows that she was upset, but he's saying it wasn't me. It wasn't God. So a little more, you know, you can understand the mindset of Willie James Howard. But people anyway, it's getting bad. You, you get the mindset. This is an example of how some of our people were carrying it down there and nationwide at this time. And now, you know, you know, people like Willie James Howard, you see him every day at work. You got relatives like Willie James Howard. And, and, you know, you got peers and everything. It, it, nothing changed. Nothing changed. Just the situations did. OK, so unfortunately, sending this letter to this white girl, Cynthia Goff, it wasn't a good idea for young Willie Howard. OK, but you can tell that this letter that he sent had a lot to do with his upbringing and him having nice clothes and parents who could work and him feeling maybe a little more special because he's allowed to work in his white store. Now, this is what happened next, y'all. The girl that Willie James Howard wrote this letter to, Cynthia Golf. her father's name is Alex Golf, and he's a former member of the Florida House of Representatives, okay? Big time white, white cracker down here in Florida. Big time. He got a hold of this letter that Willie James Howard sent to his daughter, Cynthia. I don't know how he got a hold of this letter, but I know it got to him. I don't know if she gave it to him or he just found it in her room and he got pissed off. I'm not sure. So being that this dude, Alex Goff, is somebody down in Florida, again, he's a former member of the House of Representatives. His blood is boiling when he found his love letter that this nigger sent to his daughter. Absolutely pissed off. So what Alex Goff did is he went to go pick up two of his homies, two of his white guys, you know, named Reginald H. Scott Sr. and Sheldon B. McCullers. So these three grown white men, they link up. They decide to go to Willie James Howard house armed up. They drive to his house looking for Willie James. But in the meantime, Willie James had heard that these white men were looking for him. So because of that, he figured he could run home. He's scared. So boom, Willie James runs to the house. These white dudes are at the house waiting for him to his surprise. Now, again, Willie James Howard knows that these white people don't like his kind. Okay. 
So he goes home. He's trying to tell his mom what happened, what, what went on. But in the meantime, these guys, they show up to the house. They pull up. They seen Willie James Howard's mother, Lula Howard. They pulled out the pistol, put it to her head, and demanded that she turn over her son, Willie James Howard. She got scared. She's in a bad situation. So she turned Willie James Howard over to the white men. As the car drives away, Willie James Howard is in his car with three white men salivating, foaming at the mouth, sweaty. She runs after the car, crying and screaming with her 15-year-old son in the car. So what she did is she tried to hurry up and run to the lumber yard where her husband James worked. His name is James Howard. This is Willie James Howard's father. She tries to hurry up and run near where he works to tell him what happened. So she's rushing. She's trying to get there. But in the meantime, this dude, Golf, and his two white buddies who are in the car with her son, Willie James Howard, they already went to James Howard's job. They go there before Lula. So they drive to the job, get him, pick him up, and they grab James at gunpoint also, get in the car. So now you have Willie James Howard, his father in the car, James, and these three white men. Lula missed them, but by the time she got to the lumber yard, the wife of the man who owned the lumber yard told her what had happened, okay? So these three white men, they drive Willie James Howard and his father out to a river called the, Su the Suwan River, which is along a bluff in Sulphur Springs. This guy, Golf, he ties Willie James Howard hands and feet. So you could imagine how scared they are, okay? Imagine how scared they are. He ties his hands and his feet. They got to the river. This guy, Golf, he made Willie James and his father get out the car. So they got out the car, and then the white man, Golf, asked Willie James Howard if he understood the penalty for this crime. Does he understand the penalty for his 15-year-old son committing this crime of sending a love letter to his white daughter? James Howard said, yes, sir, and he's crying. So this white guy, Goff, then asked Willie James Howard's father if he has anything to say to his son. So James offered his son, Willie James Howard, some words of comfort. He said to Willie, Willie, I cannot do anything for you right now. I'm glad that I belong to the church and prayed for you. This is what he said to his son. So Willie James Howard's final request to his father was to take his wallet. So this guy, Goff, then placed a gun to Willie James Howard's head and told him to fall in the water. Remember, his hands and feet are bound. They gagged and tied up. He says, fall in the river or I'm going to blow your head off. So Willie James Howard fell in and, of course, tortured himself to a drowning death. And that's the end of Willie James Howard. It's just that stupid. How horrible was that? Terrible. So after James Howard watched his son drown in the river, these men, they all got back in the, back in the car with him, took him back to work. So he just seen his 15-year-old son die. They took him back to work. He finished his shift after work. He went home and told his wife, Lula, that Willie James Howard was not coming home. Wow. Amazing. So in the meantime, the white men came up with a story. Of course, this guy is a big time guy. They're white. They go to the sheriff named Tom Henry. Tom Henry gets a written statement from the three white guys. And they told the sheriff that they went and picked Willie James Howard and his father up so that his father can give him a whipping for what he did. And they said that they went to the river and Willie James refused to be whipped. He was acting belligerent. Him and his father started to fight and Willie James fell in the river and drowned. That's their story. Case closed. They still do that to this day, as we can see. The sheriff said, OK, case closed. Boom, that's it. It's a done deal. We're seeing this in Mississippi right now. Rasheem Carter, Tyreek is Atwood, many other stories. But anyway, everyone in this town just carried on as if nothing happened. What can they do? It's, it's just it's a done deal. But can you imagine how Willie James Howard mother Lula felt? You know, and her sister said that Lula lived, her sister who lived for a very long time said that this is Willie James Howard's aunt, okay? She has a, his mother Lula has a sister who was his aunt 
and she said that her sister Lula died from a broken heart. Of course she did. Of course she did. I mean, this man comes home and tells her that Willie James is not coming home. She's probably looking at him like, okay, well, why are you here? If he ain't coming home, what are you doing here? You coward, you know? And people, this is a common story in the house and in, in the South. Some people are going to be cowards. Some people are going to fight. Now, Willie James Howard did make a bad decision. He was very conscious of what he was doing. He was begging white people to like him, okay? But he did not deserve this, okay? He did not deserve this. But according to the white laws at that time, he was not innocent. He committed a crime that was punishable by, punishable by death, you know, for writing this white girl a letter. But people, get in the comment section. Let me know how you feel about Willie James Howard's actions at the age of 15. Now, with my, with my comment, I'm responding as if everything in this story, let's, let's, I'm, I'm going to respond to this as if everything in this story is correct. This is what I'm going to say. You know, Willie James Howard at 15 years old, his parents felt him, man. I mean, they, 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 had this up, they had to have this uppity church mentality. His father was an absolute weakling, popcorn shrimp, wimp, weasel. Reminds me of some of the black men or people that I've been around, just like these white men remind me of the, some of the white supremacists that I've seen in law enforcement. It, it, it's so common. This coward said he's happy that he went to the church and prayed for him as they're about to take his son off, the, off this earth. He didn't fight. He didn't put up a fight for his son. But this dude claimed that he believed in God. But all that God talk went out the window because a God-fearing man is not a coward. And he would have fought and hoped for a miracle from God. This is why this dude is a coward. coward. You know what I'm saying? These dudes are about to kill your son. It's three of them. It's one of you. You need to fight. I don't know how many guns they had, but what happened to all these miracles that could happen? You never know what could happen. You know what I mean? You never know what could happen with a lot of bless you with if you do something honorable. Man, fight. Grab the gun. Pick up a rock. Hit the dude in the head. Stop. Do something, man. You don't know You don't know if you would have had the strength to push that car in the water with them dudes. I mean, come on, man. How you going to get blessed if you put forth effort? And, and, you know, this is very common amongst these Negroes who just want to sit and pray and don't put forth any effort. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying there's something wrong with praying, but you got to you got to be in, you, you got to. You got to put some act into that. You know what I mean? You know, and, and what I learned about dudes like Willie James Howard's father is because I've been around people like this before and I've met most of these Negroes. It was a real different experience when I worked around black people who thought that they were doing well in life. They had a good job. They made money. They had a deck at their house. They had two car garage and all this other, you know, stuff that people want. I noticed that a lot of these Negroes be talking that God talk. You know what I'm saying? But they don't really believe in God. They don't really believe in God. You could tell by their actions. They don't really believe in God. They just go to church. It's a big difference. They go to church, but they don't believe in God because you're a coward. Because I've seen them, you know, respond. Whereas anytime they get pressed by Whitey, all that f faith in God stuff and doing God, all that stuff goes out the window. I'm like, dude, I was like, dude, you said you believe in God, right? You doing everything right? Yeah. Okay. So why are you scared of this white person? You're not going to lose your job. And if you do lose your job, something else is going to come to you because you were doing things in a just way. He's the one that's unjust. Now they don't hear that, man. They don't hear that. They just start worshiping this white man. I'm like, man, you said you, you know, you, you get these old uppity Negroes who got a job. You, you, you got to be around these people, y'all. You got to, yo, and you're like, yo, I thought you believe, they don't believe in God, man. They just go to church, man. They don't believe in God. Same thing as Willie James Howard, father, same exact thing. So you can see where Willie James Howard comes from, the vein he come off of, the DNA that he has in his body. You could kind of see why he's in there begging this white girl to like him when he knows that she doesn't like his kind. He dressed nice. They say he can sing. All the black girls liked him, but that, nah, I'm going to work. And I'm going to go ahead and write this girl who don't like me a letter to try to get her to. You can see where Willie James Howard, what he had in him just by his father. You know what I mean? 
These people are in a deep Caucasian hypnosis, man. This didn't have to happen to him, man. You know, he wrote this letter to his white girl and it cost him his life. Now, I would never say he deserved this. And these people who did this to him, they're going to pay. They're going to pay. But it's just, wow. And nothing's changed, y'all. The behaviors of these Negroes or these white people have not changed. You know what I'm saying? Coons and white supremacists are like cousin roaches. They ain't going nowhere, man. This is messed up, man. This is messed up. And this is one reason why I feel as though a lot of our people aren't ready for white people to do anything nice for us. You know what I mean? Or treat us in a just manner. A lot of our people need abuse from white people only just so we can know, okay, this is the way it is. A lot of our people are not ready for no white people to do nothing, you know, treat us like a, you know, in a just way. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, it, it sounds bad, but I'm just saying, y'all. You know what I mean, man. You know what I mean. You know what I mean? But, uh, this is a really, a really messed up story, man. Um, I would never condone this happening to Willie James Howard. You know, I don't know what to say. But you know what I think about, though? What I think about is this. And it's a shame that I got to think like this. What would Willie James Howard have been if he would have got with that girl, Cynthia Gold? Suppose she took that letter and gave him a big white hug. What kind of man would Willie James Howard have been? You know what I'm saying? It's a shame I got to think like that. But this would, this whole system of racism, these white supremacists and these bootlick coons, it's what it does to you, man. You know, it's a shame. I don't even want to be thinking like that. But, you know, I'm never going to condone this. I know a lot will punish these tyrants and these white supremacists and you coons who aid and abet them that do things like this and who have done things like this in history. But um, this is a really sad story. Really, Willie James Howard, he was misguided and it cost him his life. But people, get in the comments. Let me know what you think. And anybody who's related to Willie James Howard, you got people on YouTube, Willie James Howard relatives. Do you have any more information? Get in the comments. Let us know. Easy.